Hey everyone, it's Tomash here. In this video I'm going to show you how I created this scene in Unreal Engine using the Path Tracer. This is not really a step-by-step -step tutorial. Instead, I try to showcase my workflow that I use on a daily basis. So let's jump in. First of all, I gather some inspiration. Pinterest, Instagram is a great place to start, or a favorite site of mine, arcdaily.com, serves as a really good source of inspiration. I've chosen a building that caught my eye. I want to model a similar structure and bring it into an Unreal space. The project has plenty of reference photos, which are really helpful during modeling. Once I know what I want, I dive into the modeling process. Here we are in Blender. I import the reference images I downloaded for the building and use them to create a model. I won't go through the modeling phase in this video, perhaps in another tutorial. And here is the finished model. The building is mostly empty. I've only added curtains to the windows, since we'll be creating an exterior scene. Creating a proper UV map is crucial to avoid dealing with it later in Unreal Engine. I export the models in FBX format, naming it Beach House. In the geometry section, set smoothing to face, and then it's ready to go. After completing the model and exporting it, I dive into Unreal. I created a new project and then a new empty level. Then I make a folder and drag the house model into it. In the pop-up window, I uncheck the Generate Missing Collider option and don't import any textures or materials to the project. I select them all and drag them into the viewport. After importing all the FBX files, Next, I organize the selected models into a folder for easier management later. Let's enable the HDRI background plugin. This will be used to light up the scene. After a quick restart, I drop this actor into the viewport and arrange it to my liking. Meanwhile, I notice that there's something wrong with the frames of the windows and doors. They have inverted normals. I need to fix this. I go back to Blender, correct the mesh, and then re-import it, replacing the old one. Now it's looking good. After that, I set up the camera. It's an important step because we need to know what will be visible in the camera to avoid working with unnecessary details. I want a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, so I adjust the sensor accordingly. I found the 20mm focal length to be suitable, quite close to the reference image. Once satisfied with my camera angle, I lock the actor's movement to avoid accidentally changing it. Now let's talk about materials. I mostly use Quixel Megascans assets, which are free to use in Unreal Engine, but I also obtained some textures from Polygon.com, which is a paid option. So I created a simple glass material. I have set the blend mode to translucent and the lighting mode to surface forward shading. I added the gray shade to the base color. For metallic, I connect the parameter with the strength of 1, and for specular, the parameter with the value of 066. For roughness, I connect the lerp node with the 0 0.05 strength parameter in the A input, and the multiply node in the B input. Then I connect the blue channel of a matte stain texture from Quixel to the A input. This channel contains roughness data. I connect the parameter into the B input to control the strength of the stain. Finally, I connect the parameter node with the strength of 0.4 to the opacity. After applying the glass material to the window mesh, the result in the viewport is quite ugly. To fix this, we need to switch the translucency type to ray tracing in the post process volume. I drag the post process volume into the viewport. First, I set it to extended. Then I switch the translucency type to ray tracing. So after that, I apply materials to the house. It's a pretty straightforward process. I 
I'm not dealing with the repetitions of the textures yet. I'll address those later using decals, creating a much more realistic appearance. Now my scene looks like this. After that, I replace the HDRI background. I download the free HDRI from Polyhaven, which I then drag into the HDRI backdrop cube map. Afterward, I adjust the parameters to my liking. Cube map size, intensity and rotation. Following this, I add a plane to the scene and apply a water shader to it. I found the shader in the engine folder. It will work perfectly for this scene, as it will be distant from the camera and can be rendered with Path Tracer. We've reached the point where we have placed our main object into the scene and set up our camera. Now it's time to populate the environment with smaller objects. In Quixel Bridge, I select some assets that I can use in the scene. Additionally, I search for trees on the Epic Marketplace and I'll be adding them to the project. I'm also importing the Nordic Coast collection to give my scene a rocky coastline look. So I placed some rocks, which already provided a solid foundation. From this point on, I can focus on the details. I start kitbashing smaller assets, aiming for a more detailed and realistic appearance. After that, I scatter smaller branches and leaves in the scene using the foliage painter. I try to capture the details from the reference images. I aim for natural randomness. The scene is slowly coming together, but it's still empty. I paint grass and flowers around the rocks to make it more visually appealing. Now some trees. I'm trying to create a pleasant composition and more grass. This is how the scene looks now. Something's off. The textures on the house are too repetitive. I'll address this with decals, which I also downloaded from the Megascans library. If you don't want a decal on a particular mesh, simply uncheck it in the details panel. Unfortunately, you'll have to do this separately for each mesh. There are no reflections in the window of the building yet. I create a material from an alpha channel PNG and apply it to a plane. I set the material blend mode to mask and I drag the alpha channel into the opacity mask. We are nearing the end of building the scene. I use the spotlight to illuminate the building more, making it stand out a bit more from the background since the house is our main object. I play around with the settings a bit here. With the construction of the scene complete, all that's left is to prepare for rendering. I create a level sequencer and throw in my camera actor. I set the desired length and FPS rate and animate the camera's movement. Before rendering with Path Tracer, make sure that Nanite support is turned off on your meshes. This is a crucial step, as the Path Tracer doesn't support Nanite. Forgetting this can lead to ugly, blurry meshes in your render. Disabling Nanite will significantly increase the demands on your computer resources, so it's important to turn it off only after you've finished your scene. Let's set the Path Tracer. You find these settings in the post process. Here are the parameters I used. The most important one is to uncheck Denoiser. Later in DaVinci Resolve, we'll have better options for noise reduction. If we want the wind to move the leaves of our vegetation in our path trace render, we need to set it up. Unfortunately, I completely forgot about this and I only noticed this mistake after I rendered the entire scene. In the detail panel of our Megascan trees, check this. Evaluate word position offset in ray tracing. So, when we are done with our scene, it's time for rendering. 
In the movie render queue, I select my sequence. Delete everything in the settings. Add the AXTER extension, path tracer rendering, and anti aliasing. Set the anti aliasing to 36 by 36. If you're unsure about the render settings, set a smaller value. Check the override anti aliasing option. I want my final result to be in HD resolution. To achieve the best possible outcome, I render my scene in 4K because scaling down a 4K video to HD produces a much sharper and more detailed final result than rendering directly in HD. Once satisfied with my settings, it's time for rendering, which will take a while. After rendering my scene, I perform the final touches in DaVinci Resolve. This is where our house truly gets its photorealistic look. So here we are in DaVinci. I added some flying particle stock footage to get more movement in the scene. These are my post-process settings. I reduced the noise, played around with the curves, performed some color correction, added a glow effect, vignetting, and some film noise on the top. You can also add a touch of chromatic aberration if you want. And here's my final result. So this roughly covers the workflow stages for creating this scene. I hope you found some useful information in this video. And if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing to the channel. I will post more videos like this in the future. See you soon. Bye bye.